Here is my pain packet. You should get one just like this. Write your first and last name on the front cover. And then every single page, write in a permanent marker or pen your name because after people work really hard on these and if you tend to leave your stuff behind others will grab it up and use it as their own i highly recommend you keep it stapled and do not take apart the pages otherwise someone else will take it so here's the start of your packet the supplies you need you need to get a piece of cardboard from the kiln room we use cardboard for our pallets, so it's one less thing you have to clean. You're welcome. And then you're going to use only the primary colors, so blue, yellow, red, and then you do need white and black. This is a lot that I poured. It's about, it's bigger than my thumb. You do not need even this much. Do not pour a lot of color onto your palette. Then you need a pen, or excuse me, a paintbrush. Now this is a round tip brush. It's way too big for this project. This is a square tip brush. It's way too big. You need to choose a round tip brush similar to these. This can help with the detailed edges. This can help with larger areas. This one looks pretty good too. So please make sure you choose a round tip brush. I would not choose something that's obviously very dirty and a square tip brush. It won't help you stay inside the lines. Okay. You also need a small jar of water above all three sinks. There are jars you can use. You also need some paper towels and your palette and then of course you need your paint packet okay the point of this is to teach you how to mix colors with your paint but also how to actually paint and I may be on maternity leave right now so I want to make sure that I'm instructing you as best as possible while I'm away so first thing, I'd start with yellow. You take your brush, you only dip it in a small amount, just like that. And then you come around to the circle here, start inside the circle, get a feel for how much paint is actually on your brush, and then slowly go to the edge. If you notice, I'm holding my brush like a pencil and I am using the extra paint that was right here to, I'm using that and moving it around the circle to make it nice and crisp and clean. Now, this is the color wheel, it's the first page. The next color is yellow, green, then green, blue, green, and blue. If you don't know how to mix colors, it's down at the bottom of your packet. What I'm gonna do next is, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow, and I'm gonna make green. I'm gonna take a very small amount of blue, small amount, mix that in there, until I get a pretty nice green. Now, as you notice, I'm twisting my paintbrush, I'm getting all the color off the palette, because you don't want any random spots of yellow or blue to show up. So mix it really good. And then I could come in here, start in the center, and then slowly go out to the edges of the circle. Now if you ask me, this green is a little too yellow green. I don't think it's green enough. So to fix that, I'm going to take a little bit more blue, not a lot, a little bit, and mix it with the green. 
And since that's darker and more of like a grass green, I'm gonna put that on my circle. I think I need more. So just like I am doing here, mixing, testing, this is what you need to do as well. Twist your paintbrush, get all the excess off. Then you can come back, start in the center, and slowly move towards the edge. I'm in full control of my paintbrush. My fingers are near or above the rest, the finger rest. My wrist is on the table. My hand is not moving a lot. And I keep going back and forth because what I'm doing is I'm moving paint around so it's nice and smooth. You should not take a huge lump and put it on your spot and try and mix everything here and leave this horrible blob of a mess. That is not acceptable. That is not good craftsmanship. So with this, I'm gonna actually scrape off what I just did. I want you to mix on the palette before you paint on the paper. So we need to make yellow green now. I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and a small section of this green already. Maybe a little bit more. I flip my brush around trying to get all the edges. Scoop up what you can and then you can come back in here. And it's not laying down pretty because of my previous blotched application. Another reason why it's important to have good craftsmanship. I'm smearing it around, trying to make it nice and smooth, I'm going in different directions, and that's pretty good. Then, let's see here, let's clean our brush. I'm going to go to orange. So when you're trying to mix a color, you want to start with the lighter of the two. I would start with yellow. And you start with the lighter of the two because that way you use less paint. And you only need a very small amount of red to make orange. And again, that looks a little more like red orange. So you keep mixing until you get a good color. Twist your brush around. I hope this is therapeutic for you guys. It's a little different. Many of you have never painted before. And you come in here, just like I said, hold your paintbrush like a pen or pencil, have your wrist laying on the table, start in the center of the shape and slowly move, make your way to the edge. Now this is going to be a quiz grade. Your neatness does matter. Stay inside the lines as best as possible. If you notice here, it's much darker in the center and not on the edge. We need to make everything the same value. And nice and smooth. We're using acrylic paint. And acrylic paint can dry very quickly if you do thin layers. If you do thick layers like I did here, it will take longer to dry and it's more frustrating to work with. So after orange, I'm gonna do yellow orange. My brush has orange on it. I'm gonna actually just dip my brush in the yellow and come along here and mix up what's on my brush. 
go try and get yellow orange. Pick up what you can, come to the center, and when you are comfortable, you can go to the edge. And then smooth it out. We want it to be the same value the entire circle. Okay. These look great. This one looks good. This one is too messy. I really want you to try and stay inside the lines as best as possible. You continue around the entire color wheel. Now when it comes to white and black, it might sound silly, but I do want you to take white and actually paint that spot white. Even on your project, we're going to paper mache it. And if you have white areas, you have to apply white. Then the black. Come along, starting the center. As soon as you're comfortable, you can come out to the edge. When you're painting, you really need to pay attention to it. I'm going to start here. I'm going to end here and have confidence we don't want jagged edges so there's my black now I have black on my brush and I need a gray so I'm going to take my black into the white and mix that up and then I'll come back to the gray All right, so that's page one. Please finish the rest of the color wheel there. Now we're gonna move on to page two. And some of you are gonna be like, but my color wheel is still wet. Well, let's use our minds here. We're going to open the packet. 